It's been such a long time, I know. This is the last stage of the inspection that we need to perform before I send this thing off to the machine shop. And uh, what we're going to be doing here is to check the deck of the block to determine if it's completely flat. Now, in order to do this, we must start with a perfectly clean deck surface. We still got remnants of the old composite cylinder head gasket and uh, there's a bunch of leftover lead, among other things, just kind of caked on the block. Oh look, a BB. See, I told you this thing was full of BBs. Hey, I thought I got them all. Must have missed that one. Fantastic. Well, I haven't seen any broken glass fall out. But this thing's getting tanked, and before I send it off, I want to inspect this surface to see if there's going to have to be any work performed. And the reason I left it all dirty and oily and nasty all, over all these years is all that stuff kind of protected the surface to keep it from rusting. If you ever have a cylinder head decked and serviced, you need to keep it oiled so it doesn't rust. So the old nastiness kind of kept it safe. So here are the tools we're going to use. I've got a 16 inch straight edge and I'm going to use this for uh, inspecting the block along with a set of feeler gauges here and some of these are very fine. I think I have some of them that go down into the like five ten thousandths of an inch. Uh, we've got a set of pliers, a $60 snap-on scraper just to show off and prove that I have one, and a couple of new razor blades. One's for scraping with, and then the other one's for scraping with. We're going to grab the pliers here, and the first thing you want to do is remove the dowel pins from the block. And there's one that's at this corner and one that's at this corner, and I don't know what happened to that one, but these are really important because this is what's responsible for holding your cylinder head straight. I'll be putting a fresh set of those things in. Yeah, put that in the parts list. I want to use the first razor blade to scrape the lead, the leftover remnants of the head gasket off the block. And you want to be careful with this not to gouge or dig in, so try to keep the razor blade flat and smooth and scrape off the majority of the chunks. Next we take a new razor blade I'm going to scrape down all the surfaces now, like this. I'm going to hold the blade vertically. And you want to keep the razor blade flush with the block surface. Now if you damage the, the blade on a rough area, like for instance, right here, this area was really rough. Best just to get a new one. One more new razor blade, why not? Now that the block is clean, we can start taking measurements. But some of you may have never looked at a disassembled 4G63 block before, so all these holes may not make a whole lot of sense. Let's take a minute to look at those. I sketched a 4G63 block deck on this whiteboard. The dark purple circles are oil return galleries from the head. The dark purple circles with the white holes in the middle represent head bolt holes. You want to run an M12 by 125 tap through those and clean them out prior to assembly. I, I don't know why I'm doing this right now, except because I just have the tools. Six bolts I'll use the M12 by 125 tap. Second generation seven bolt blocks use an M11 by 125. So you need to hunt down an oddball tap for those prior to uh, putting the engine back together. The blue holes are all coolant passages. And if you look at this on the block, it all makes perfect sense because the bolt holes are all squared with each other. All of the holes, with the exception of the big ones, 
are coolant passages. This one with the teardrop is the only oil supply gallery for the entire cylinder head. It shares duty with the head bolt hole and the head is countersunk to allow oil to flow around the stud where it supplies the head oil regulator. So that's what you have to deal with here. In order to take measurements what we need to do is take our straight edge and we're going to measure this in several directions. Let me give you a quick illustration of what those are. We need to check the deck. We need to check the deck. We need to check the check the check the deck, of course, along the uh, bolt hole surfaces in several directions. All we want to do is take the straight edge and lay it down on its flat side, and use feeler gauges, the smallest ones we can find to start with, and try to see if we can uh, see this little floppy one here. This would be a uh, half of a thousandth. It's .0005. And what I'm going to do is use the straight edge and see if I can slip this thing underneath like so. And if I can get the, the straight edge underneath it, then I've got a little bit of a, a point where it's not quite straight, where it's a little bit warped. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and start testing the block and let you see how this works. I got nothing. Nice. Look at that. Is it? No, nope, I can't get it under. Looks to me like I got a little bit of an edge right there. spot right there. Ooh, looks like I got another one. All right, now let's try the diagonals. So look at a little spot right here right here and just barely loose there. What it looks like I'll probably have to take off is about a half a thousandth of an inch. Chances are the uh, tolerances for that are going to be within two ten thousandths and uh, a quick pass on a mill would uh, take care of this. Now you want to be careful not to cut too much into the surface of the deck because it causes the quench area on the combustion chamber to pinch down and squeeze. You want this to be true and Mitsubishi doesn't give you a whole lot of room to work with here. So if you need to take off more than a thousandth, chances are the block is junk. Sometimes people can get away with two thousandths. Just be aware that if you do this you'd actually need to get a thicker head gasket in order to compensate for what's removed here. Well, that's a wrap. Hope you've enjoyed watching the 100 series videos. This thing's going off to the machine shop for the rest of the work. And uh, of course, I'll, I'm just getting it tanked first. And then when I get it back, it's going off to powder coat. And then uh, we're going to get the rest of the machine work done. Stay tuned for the 200 series. I'm going to make some room in this garage for some other projects while we're waiting for this. So uh, I'll see you guys again soon.